Hello beautiful, strong, happy and healthy people. Thank you so much for checking out the first episode of my new YouTube podcast. As you can see, this background is super Christmassy and that is because it's Christmas time and I want to do out my house kind of as if Christmas threw up in it because I'm going to be celebrating my family Christmas in my apartment this year and yes, I did every single one of these chains all by myself with absolutely no help from my sister. So, first thing I want to talk about today is this, the Game Changer documentary. Now, this was directed by James Waltz, and he was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, kind of defending his position on the whole documentary. This was a pro-vegan documentary, even though he says the goal wasn't necessarily to say that meat was bad and that vegan is the way of life, although that was pretty much the underlying statement through the whole documentary. Now, the reason why I'm quite sensitive on the topic is because I was actually vegan for four years. I started when I was 18, and by the time I was 20, I started to get super into martial arts. I started doing Muay Thai, boxing, Jiu Jitsu, and weightlifting to get stronger. Now, at this point, after about a year of training, I was still so fatigued. I uh, could not gain any strength. I had to nap a lot. I was so anemic. I was covered in bruises. This is a photo of me of just the top part of my body to show how ridiculous it was that I had this many bruises on my body. Now, I'm just going to go through five quick takeaways from that Joe Rogan, Chris Cressa, James Wilk experience and the Game Changers documentary. A lot of my clients right now are coming to me and saying, should I go vegan? What's your opinion on vegan? And I did it, I tried it, I wish it worked. It was so easy. I love diets that have such strict guidelines that just work, but there's no such thing as one that just works for everyone. Everybody's completely different. But you know, there is some people that will absolutely thrive on a vegetarian diet. The genetics are made for it. But there's majority of the people that definitely will not. I tell everyone, if you really want to try it, go do it. But come talk to me in three years because there is a honeymoon period and most people don't get past that three year point. The first takeaway is that James doesn't actually have a solid argument saying that meat is bad. Oh, whether or not red meat's bad yeah. for you? Yeah, we never really cleared that up. Most of his arguments is saying that vegetables are good. He never has a good argument saying that good, ethically sourced, grass-fed, free-range, all that fun stuff, meat is actually bad for you. Takeaway number two is that it's an actual honeymoon period when it comes to veganism as with any other diet. And also you need to take into account that there is a really strong placebo effect. Our minds are epic, about 15 to 72% of possibility when it comes to placebo. So most of the people that are having epic things that are happening as soon as they got into it, like as soon as they started diet, they started vegetarian or vegan diet, it could either be one, they're stopping all the crap that they were on, they're not eating processed food, they're not eating bad meats anymore, they're not eating now and having McDonald's anymore, or it could be the fact that they are or they are having a bit of a placebo effect and their mind is telling them that they're doing a good thing, they're an awesome person because they're not killing animals and they're making their whole body feel really good. The third takeaway is that James actually said if you are going to eat meat, one of the best meats to eat is kangaroo and game meat. Now I am a massive fan of kangaroo, I am Australian and I eat one of our national animals but kangaroo in Australia is actually one considered a pest, it is completely free range, you can't farm kangaroos, you can't hold them in one spot because they jump around and they fight and they're pretty badass and they're actually hunted. So kangaroos live an epic life in Australia and people go out and hunt them and then we get to eat them. So it's actually the, the cheapest and quickest way for me to get ethically sourced animal meats without actually having to go directly to a hunter. Number four is one argument that Chris and James both had is that people need to eat more vegetables. So both pro vegetables and that was the underlying thing the whole time that people are not eating enough healthy food. Now I have a saying, I think I actually found it on a documentary years ago. I got obsessed with watching vegan health documentaries. I watched every single one under the sun. That if you cannot kill it, pick it or grow it, then don't eat it. People need to stick to those guidelines. If you aren't actually eating things that are from the earth, things that we are growing, things that we are killing from the earth, and you're eating all this processed stuff, and you're saying that then you're saying you're not feeling good, maybe think about changing all those other things before you go into a strict no meat diet and just blame it on the meat. And number five, if you're actually worried about animal cruelty, then maybe start outsourcing your meat and finding more ethical forms. So 
One, if you are going to go pure vegetarian, try and get some eggs. I get all my eggs from a local lady who actually has chickens in her backyard. I try and eat kangaroo meat and whenever I'm out, I try and go to places that I know have ethically sourced free range meat. Now you can make these efforts in your life. If you are thinking about changing because of the animal cruelty reason, you don't have to eat factory farm animals. You don't have to choose things because it's convenient. It is a little bit harder to find these things, but once you find it, it's just easy. You can actually get good meat sent to your door every day and not actually have to do the work. So if that is one of your biggest concerns, then stop going to your Woolworths and your Coles and your Costco to buy your meat and actually go directly to the farmers and directly to the hunters. Put a line of random people in front of you and I said, can you pick who you think will be a national health minister in the fight of obesity? Who would you choose? I bet you it wouldn't be this chick. But in Belgium, it is. This is Maggie de Bloc, and she is actually the woman in the front line fighting against obesity in Belgium. Now, before I go into my argument, Maggie is actually well loved in Belgium and has been practicing medicine as a GP for over 25 years. She was actually in line to be the next premier before she was given this position. So before I say that, she's actually a really good politician. But this is also an idea to show why what is wrong with politicians is because we're choosing people based on their political views and not necessarily based on what they're really actually fighting for themselves. Now, Maggie, I was doing a lot of thought and I was thinking, what would it take for me to be on this woman's side in the fight against obesity? Now, I am very strong against obesity. I fight it every single day in my life in my genetics. If you look at my kind of family tree, most people have type 2 diabetes, everyone has thyroid issues, everyone dies of heart attacks. It is just the list goes on and I fight against my genetics every single day with my food choices. I think the best thing that this lady could do is actually start her weight loss and diet process in the face of Belgium and let the whole country see her transition. Now imagine if this lady says, yes, I am obese and that is because of my life choices in the part, past, the society options I've had given to me, lack of education, and she says that I am going to do my transformation and I want the rest of the country to join me. And she actually documents her whole weight loss journey. She says, this is what I mean for breakfast, this is my coach, this is the exercise I'm doing, look at this that I'm lifting, oh my god, I just ran this, and as if and I just lost this much weight, as if the whole country wouldn't be behind her for the fight against obesity. If she can actually do it, if she goes from her state right now and actually does a full transformation in the eyes of the whole country, can you imagine what that would do for the fight against obesity? So right now, her standing there saying obesity has to change, we have to implement all these programs as someone that's not doing anything for herself, then that is definitely a problem. But if she says, I am here and I am the process of what is wrong with obesity and the process of what is wrong with the going on in our country, and she says, this is what I'm going to do to change it, and I'm going to do the exact same thing and you guys are going to join me, then my God, would that be a powerful message. And she would definitely have my eyes on every single one of her videos and definitely have my vote for us in her country. I have seen this one pop up in your feed a few times. Ex-vegan influencers goes into carnivore diet eating all this meat and feels so much better. Now this is Elise Parker. One thing I should say before I start on this that most people are not not actually saying until they read into the articles is that at least actually stopped being vegan at least a year ago before going straight into a carnivore diet she already started eating meat now at least was very similar to me she was actually vegan for five or vegetarian vegan for five years and then she introduced me back in because she had a lot of health problems very similar to what I was going through and she has tried a lot of different challenges in the past she did one based on not washing her hair not wearing deodorant not shaving her armpits or the fun things in order to just kind of document testing on herself and her next test was to go 30 days on a carnivore diet. Now throughout this period at the start she did say she had digestive issues then by the end of it she said she actually had better digestive issues than she did when she was vegan. Now the whole point of the carnivore diet is not to live the rest of your life on a carnivore diet, it is kind of a process of elimination diet and all it's going to do is set the template of your diet. So for me, I do eat a decent amount of meat, so the basis of my diet probably is protein and meat. So she just has meat, and then after a month, she then reintroduces things and sees how your body feels. So let's say you have meat, and then one day you introduce some apples, and after that you introduce some different greens, you might introduce some oats, and you see what happens to your body. Are you feeling really tired? Are you feeling sluggish? Are you getting brain fog? Are you getting bloating? 
and this will give you a template to kind of figure out what foods work best for you and if you're getting foods that are giving you bloating or you're getting worse digestive issues then you just try and avoid that food cut it out of your diet and find things that work well so the point of the the carnival diet is not to go completely carnival for the rest of your life it is a way to just figure out what works well for your body Now it is the end of the year, it is Christmas time as you can tell from my epic decorations behind me and the good thing about the new year is all the new year's resolutions. Now I'm a fitness coach, I run a fitness business, I own fitness studios and in the new year that's when we got all the new motivated people ready to kill some goals, ready to burn up all that junk food they had over Christmas. Now one thing that I think all women should be putting their news resolutions this year is get strong, start lifting weights and cut out a little bit of that cardio. Now, the reason why every single woman needs to put the focus on strength training and building muscle over doing cardio is because one, their body composition is gonna change. Your whole body is gonna change shape. If you still have body fat and you have muscle mass, everything sits a little bit better. Your butt will sit higher, your stomach will sit tighter, things will jiggle a little bit less. You don't necessarily have to be ripped and lean to look good with muscle. Number two is you won't look bulky. Now, in order to gain muscle for a female, it is actually hard and it does take time and it is about consistency. And in order to get bulky, don't worry, you'll definitely see it before it even kind of happens. Most women you see in photos that are bulky are more than likely on steroids or they've been training for like 10, 20, 30 years of lifting weights. And that's not just something that happens overnight. And it's very unlikely they're going to get bulky but let's just say you do get to a point of bulkiness you would have actually got there because you're enjoying the results and you actually enjoy the way you look another reason is it's extremely empowering to do things that you never thought you were capable of before because we're female we've been painted with this image that we are weak and that we are unable to do a lot of things that men can do i can honestly say that i lift heavy weights than the average man can now they might be stronger than me at something else but when it comes to actually lifting like a deadlift or a squat the average guy off the street more than likely i can deadlift more than that person that feeling you get from picking up a weight or doing something that you've never been able to do before is an extremely empowering feeling you see this from your friend that's super into the gym, that every time she gets a PB, even if it's a kilo more or one rep more, she has to post it. Because the fact that she achieved that and her body's able to do that is amazing to her. Getting strong and lifting weights is all about discipline and consistency. If you can actually build consistency in your life when it comes to weight training and programming, it actually translates into so many other things in your day-to-day -day life. You'll start finding that with your food, you'll be a lot more consistent. With your downtime, you'll be more consistent. You'll start recovering better and you'll just start programming your life a little bit more organized. Now, if you're completely new to weightlifting and you have absolutely nowhere to start, I recommend absolutely everyone actually get a trainer now no trainers can be expensive if you can find a really good trainer just for a week two weeks a couple sessions six weeks eight weeks just to teach you techniques and you literally go to that trainer and say i want to learn how to train myself so i want you to show me how to squat how to hinge how to push how to pull a good form tell me where my imbalances are tell me where i'm moving wrong tell me what i need to work on what I need to increase my flexibility, if I'm getting knee pains, what do I need to do? Like literally have someone who can go back and forth to. Actually say that I want you to work with me for my period, write me a program, and then I'm gonna come back to you every once in a while and progress through this program. That's all you need. Once you understand how to move correctly and you understand the technique, you then can just find a program online and start following other eight and 12 week programs until you find a style of training that actually works really well for you. It is the end of the year, New Year's resolution beginning, everyone's trying to look better and feel better, and one company that is absolutely killing right now with a $3.19 billion, billion dollar evaluation on the stock market is this guy's, Smile Direct Club. Now, if you don't know already, Smile Direct Club is pretty much like getting braces, they're putting Invisalign, it is a mouthpiece that you put in. The reason why these people are killing it right now is because it eliminates the price of the doctor visits. All they do is you go in, you take a 3D scan in your mouth, they take thousands of images, and then they show you what your teeth is now, and then they show you what your teeth is going to be in that three to 12 month period if you continue wearing their braces. 
Now, I have recently started Smile Direct Club, and I literally mean recently, I mean pretty much 24 hours worth of it. And I'm gonna tell you guys five things that you should know before you start Smile Direct Club, if you're thinking about it, that I wish I kinda knew about 48 hours ago. Number one is the first time you put on your mold, it would actually really hurt. And it feel as if they're not actually made for your teeth because you have to force them into place. Number two is taking them off for the first time if you don't know how to do it properly is excruciating. Now I took mine off because I had to eat and I kind of wish I YouTube first how to take them off properly. I assume that the best way to take them off is to literally try and unclip it and pull it down. And that was not the best way. It actually got caught on the front of my teeth and it killed. That my teeth hurt that much that I could not eat and I did not want to put them back on. I was so scared to put them back on because of the pain I was in to take them back off. I then spoke to my brother who's been using these for a while and he told me he actually YouTubed it how to do it and you clip it from the inside and you peel it off. So if you are thinking about getting these, make sure you watch a YouTube video on how to take them off correctly before you attempt because it's definitely a big put off the first go. Number three is you're not really going to want to eat much the first time you put them on. I don't recommend putting them on if you have a big event coming up within the first few days. Don't do it a few days before Christmas like I did. Don't do it if you're about to have a birthday thing. Don't do it if you've got a steak dinner coming up because you're not really going to want to eat. Your teeth are really achy and the eyes you're biting to something is like kind of a real product because it just feels like it's gonna hurt straight away without even doing it. You do not wanna bite an apple. It feels like you're gonna bite an apple and you'll look at the apple and all your teeth are in it, that your teeth feel that sensitive. I have actually been having smoothies and things like that for food because I physically cannot bite anything because it just feels like it's going to hurt even though I'm not even going to attempt it. Number four is, yes, it's painful. For the first two days, you are gonna experience a bit of pain, but every week or that second week you do change your mouth guard, you are going to experience a whole new day of pain because you are moving your teeth again. And number five is I am actually not wearing them right now. I took them off because you actually slow your words a lot when you first put them in. And I already have a little bit of a, like a babyish voice and I talk fast and it's kind of hard to understand me. And sometimes I have a little bit of a lift in some of my words because I've got a weird accent. But when I have them in, I have to repeat myself so many times because I've got a massive list and I find it really hard to talk, which is a little bit difficult because my whole job is based on me talking. So those are just five quick things that I wish I knew before I started putting into the Smile Direct Clubs Invisalign. So hopefully before you give it a go, make sure you YouTube how to take it off. Make sure you time it correctly before you do it. Don't do it right before Christmas because guess who's not really gonna wanna eat ham and all the yummy Christmas food tomorrow because it's going to hurt to my teeth. Even salad I'm a little bit worried about. Thank you guys so much for checking out my first YouTube little podcast. I hope you guys liked it. I'm gonna try and do the, one of these bad boys every single week. If you have any topics you want me to touch up on, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure you press that big red subscribe button right there, there, somewhere around here. And uh, in the meantime, oh, actually, give me one of those uh, thumbs up things. Otherwise, in the meantime, keep me strong, happy, and healthy.